So this is a talk about the limping child. I'm going to go through the differential diagnoses, a little bit about the investigations, and then a brief section on management of different causes. So the limping child is a really common presentation to the emergency department. There's lots and lots of potential causes, uh, but it's important not to miss something serious underlying the So differential diagnoses, uh, we can use a surgical sieve, like with other diseases, to work out what they might be. So uh, trauma, infection, immune causes, inflammatory causes, neoplastic, idiopathic, vascular and congenital causes. We'll go through one example of each one through the next few slides. So trauma, um, kids fall off things and break things, uh, just like adults. So the toddler's fracture is one to be particularly aware of. Uh, it's a fracture of the distal tibia, uh, not the fibula. Uh, it can be caused by minimal trauma or a twisting action and it's usually a spiral or oblique fracture it can be quite hard to see on the x-ray so you have to have a good look at this in your own time so septic arthritis is an orthopedic emergency uh, it presents similarly to a fractured neck of femur with the leg is shortened and externally rotated but it can also be hot and inflamed um, Staph aureus is the most common causative uh, organism. As you can see on this on this MRI, the right hip, the um, the bone is really quite damaged, and you can see all that pus sitting around it, where it should be nice and clear around it. Um, so it really is quite destructive. So immune causes, juvenile arthritis. There's many many types of this, so I'm not going to go through them all. Um, there's idiopathic, which has its own subtypes. There's lupus, scleroderma, Kawasaki's, dermatomyositis, and plenty of others. Um, the main symptoms are sort of a six week history of morning pain and stiffness, swelling and fevers. Um, and the important thing to think about here is if you're suspecting this, or this is the sort of history you're looking at, you need to examine the other systems because lots of these diseases can affect the cardiovascular system and other, other body systems. Neoplasm, um, it's fairly rare, but the most common tumours in children, uh, bone tumours in children, I should say, are uh, osteosarcoma and Ewing sarcoma. What you need to look out for are the red flags in the history. So bony pain, night pain, a persistent limp, fever, chills and night sweats. Um, pathological fractures can be caused by uh, either minimal trauma or no trauma at all and you get disruption in the cortex. And you should also look at the x-ray for some periosteal reaction if you're at all suspicious. The, uh, the outcomes are quite good. The five-year survival is quoted by the American Cancer Society as between 60 and 80% for a local tumour, but it's much, much worse than metastatic disease. So if you're the first person to see this child, you want to make sure you don't miss it. Vascular causes. Uh, Perthes disease is avascular necrosis of the femoral head. Um, it's usually self-limiting. Uh, young children uh, under six who get it do much better than older children. Um, as you can see on this x-ray, uh, the right hip, the femoral head, just doesn't look quite right. Um, it's disrupted, it looks a little bit woolly, and um, that's your sort of classic Perthes x-ray. So idiopathic, we've got a scuffy or a slipped capsule femoral epiphysis. So if you look at the left hip on this x-ray, Think, think about an ice cream cone where the ice cream is sort of slipped off the cone just as the uh, femoral epiphysis is slipped off the shaft. Um, it's associated with obesity. Uh, it's more common in boys and it can be caused by repeated trauma but it doesn't have to be significant trauma. Um, it can be bilateral uh, but not always at the same time so you need to watch for that later on. Uh, congenital causes, developmental dysplasia of the hip. It should be checked at birth, but it can be missed. So the hip forms in utero and in the early months um, because, the, because the femoral head is in joint, the acetabulum forms around it. If the hip's not in joint, then that can't happen. And you get this picture, like the right hip here, um, the pelvis just hasn't formed around the joint. A delaying diagnosis makes the treatment quite more quite a lot more complex, so it really is something you need to pick up early on. So investigations, it's important to do a thorough history as with everything else. 
um, clinical examination should be the musculoskeletal system and also your other other systems if you suspect something uh, like arthritis or cancer. Uh, imaging ultrasound is particularly good for young children whose bones haven't fully ossified yet because uh, x-ray is not great at picking that sort of thing up. Um, it's also really good if you're looking for pus or fluid around the joint. X-rays are good for looking at fractures. Uh, MRI is, is pretty good for all of that stuff, but uh, not that readily available. So blood tests, um, CRP, ESR, full blood count and cultures and immune markers can be really useful if you're thinking on the septic arthritis or infl inflammation, inflammation line of things. So this is a table just looking at the symptoms according to cause. It is quite a useful table, but I'm not going to read it out to you because you can do that yourself. But it might be worth pausing here and just having a look and seeing if this is helpful to you. So management, just quickly. So fracture, dead simple, reduce, immobilise, rehabilitate, just like adults, done. Septic arthritis requires a washout and antibiotics. The antibiotics can be empirical or they can be from cultural sensitivities from a blood test or from the pus from the joint itself. Scuffy, similar to a fracture, uh, but as I said before, the other hip is, has the potential to slip, so you need to make sure you're keeping an eye on that and follow up. Arthritis is one for the rheumatologist to worry about, um, so we're looking at treating the cause underlying the arthritis, uh, which is far too complicated for likes of me. Neoplasm, uh, MDT approach, as with other cancers, and your kind of last resort end of the road is amputation. Perthes disease requires bracing and minimal weight bearing to protect the joint and to allow the uh, blood supply to come back and deviate. So it's a sling if it's caught early on, it's a closed reduction with a spiker cast if it's a bit later, and osteotomy to sort of rebuild the acetabulum if it's left too late. So in summary, there are many causes of limp in children. There are a few important diagnoses to rule out and a combination of history, examination, imaging and blood tests can be used to identify the likely cause. And just a side note, it's not about limping children, but if you see a long bone fracture in a child who's not walking, you have to suspect abuse um, until it's proven otherwise. So just a couple of resources that I used and uh, thanks very much for listening.